going to go ahead and call to order the workshop and declare a quorum of seven members present. We'll start with item C1, consideration, discussion, and possible action related to the 2016-17 budget. Dr. Ely. Thank you, Dr. Yoke. And we continue to work on our budgeting and staffing uh, throughout the summer. Uh, as you know, the budget will be finalized at the regularly scheduled August uh, board meeting. So this is one of the last uh, looks that we have uh, for the board as to kind of where we are uh, in that process. Uh, on that night in August, we will uh, adopt, we will be seeking your approval to adopt the budget and also set the tax rate that evening. Uh, here with the update of where we are is Deputy Superintendent for Business and Operations, Mike Marco. Mr. Marco. I would think the more what I want is much bigger than the. <laughs> the what. I'm working on it. Okay. Here. Okay. Uh, just a reflection back to June and the values or the key values we used uh, for our presentation in June. Uh, stepping back on the revenue side in June, we used a 3.7% uh, increase in enrollment. Uh, we kind of held that steady across and out years, and we'll revisit that again uh, here in a few minutes at 3.65%. And we took our property values from May to June, I believe, from 6% to 9%. Those were our revenue drivers for our June update. Our, on the expenditure side, we did have a 2.5% increase in salaries. 0% uh, as far as increase on uh, the district's contribution for health insurance premiums, 1% increase on supplies and materials, and we were at just shy of $1.8 million in new personnel. Uh, this is what our spreadsheet looked like in June, and I'll just kind of work from the arrows, 3.7% on the enrollment piece. 9% on uh, property values, thank you, 2.5% on the uh, salary component, new positions of just shy of 1.8. If you recall in June, uh, we had a deficit projected of a little over $700,000. If we looked out at our 17.5% number for our cash flow in 2021, we were at a deficit of just shy of $200,000. Again, this is from June. This is just a summary of what I uh, just mentioned. 705 deficit and 178 under cash flow in 2020-2021. This month, I've upped our property values to 9.3%. Uh, I've maintained the student enrollment number, and again, those numbers on the projection out years are consistent with June. Again, really didn't change those. On the expenditure side, of course, we've already approved the 2.5% increase for next year. We've held at 0% on increasing our uh, health insurance premiums. Supplies and materials still at 1%. I did. Uh, increase our new personnel by 100,000. Uh, I added a, a couple of positions in there uh, to be prepared in case we have any 22 to 1 issues at the elementary level. Uh, since I had uh, some additional revenue due to property values, I went ahead and added that uh, buffer in. Hopefully, we won't need it, uh, but just in case, uh, it's accounted for in our numbers. Here's our new spreadsheet. Now, we did have an updated version of our funding template uh, since last month, so there, there was a little bit of an impact on what we had, but um, uh, our increased revenue on local values kind of washed that out. Again, holding the 3.7%, all these numbers that are projected out, also we kept those from June as well with the, the property values as well as the uh, enrollment ADA. Uh, here's our 9.3%. This increased uh, this number from around 86,540, so we went up a little over $200,000, probably about $240,000 as far as local property revenue. Maintain the 2.5%, that number stays the same. 
And again, you see an extra 100,000 here, up from the 1.7 to the 1.859. Uh, the new funding template projected a little less state revenue, so about 100,000 plus I added another 100,000 on the expenditure side. So that kind of washed out a little bit of our increase, but we're still coming in uh, about 30,000, 32,000 uh, less deficit than we had last month. Uh, the new template did help us out in some of these out years and lesser deficits by a couple of hundred thousand dollars. Uh, when you remove a couple of hundred thousand dollars off of each of those years, then there's a compounding effect and that puts us on the positive side uh, as opposed to a negative 173,000 on our cash flow number out here. I do a couple of things I want to mention to the board. Um, yes, I'm still being a little bit conservative, uh, but what I don't want to do is overshoot and then when I'm sitting with you in August explains why I overshot a little bit. This is, I think, uh, a worst case number. I think it'll only improve between now and August. Uh, also something I don't think we need to get uh, too worked up about, but just to point out to you, this is uh, the recapture line. Our threshold apparently was 9%, so we're starting to show some recapture in the out years. Uh, and that's really a result of whether you had almost an 8% growth last year, you're over 9 this year. Uh, so that property value per kiddo is starting to add up. So we're passing over that threshold of 514,000 per, per, per watt. Uh, again, I think we just become cognizant of this because uh, that will probably even change between now, or excuse me, this time next year. Uh, and also we're, we're going into the legislative year last last go around that recapture value went from 504,000 to 514. So the state tends to play with that number as well. So I think we just become aware of this. You have high property values and your student enrollment number is kind of stabilizing around 4% or whatever. Uh, that eventually that's going to gain momentum. So we need to just be aware of that. Uh, I noticed that once we went up over the 9% that it started showing us becoming subject to recapture. So uh, again, yes, I am a little conservative here. Um, and I do think uh, a deficit of 673 is a worst case scenario. Well, thank you for redoing it. and. and um, I, I think Mr. Harris is probably just chomping at the bit to talk to you about your last yellow arrow. But um, I, I, it's my understanding, just to clarify, we'll have a better, the finalized numbers for the property value in August, correct? Yes, actually, Dr. Yoke, I'll probably have those next week. Okay. The, 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 the tough part about this is we'll get certified values the first of next week. So right. And this time next week, I could probably tell you with precise. Right. I just wanted to clarify to the community what, what changes um, between now that in reality the work that you all have done on identifying what we need for the educational piece is done, um, but we're, we're waiting for the finalized numbers for property value. Correct. So. I would not foresee the expenditure side uh, changing from this point forward. Um, the only thing I think that will, will change for us is increased local revenue, which okay. is a positive thing, with the exception of recapture. Thank you. I would say those won't change uh, dramatically. What those are are projected numbers right now based on last year with growth in there. Um, our business office is putting the exact numbers in there now, so there will be some slight differences in there. But uh, as far as total appropriations, will be in the same, same area. Mr. Harris. I just had a question about the TRS payment. Are we done this year with with that? Okay. 0.5 percent. So okay. um, you're looking at the TRS on behalf payment of 4.2 million dollars. Well, 
Well, and the percentage that the okay. employee contribution. I'll with either one. So yes, the employee, the ramping up of employee contribution uh, to the teacher retirement system uh, will be fully implemented this upcoming school year with this budget. Employees uh, will uh, submit 7.7 percent uh, of their salary uh, will go to TRS. That's up from three years ago where it was 6.4 percent. So in the pink line there, that increase we have for personnel go up just a hair. Pink line? Go up, right, that percentage just above that. Uh, that we won't have to net out a half a percent. No, sir, that would be 1.5 okay. percent to the employee. Anybody else? Can we see the graph? Yes, you have a graph. <laughs> I, was, I was just waiting. I wanted you to ask for it. Uh, that's the summary, and this is Dr. Ely's specialty. Um, yellow again is the uh, is the caution line of 17.5% uh, uh, for cash flow. I'll remind everyone that the red was when we first started this, 2014, where we thought we were going to be. The green is the 2014-15 um, the audited numbers. As you can see, we were, we were projecting to go a little lower. We ended up with a $325,000 surplus to the budget that year. Um, and you can see, uh, based on that, uh, this, was, uh, this was what we were looking to do last year. And then the blue line is what the work that we've been doing this year. Um, and this is our latest iteration, the July 19th version. As you can see, we're flattening out. Um, uh, as far as our reliance on our balance here at 17-18, between 17-18 and 18-19, this is when we would be opening three schools, oh, excuse me, two schools that year, intermediate school number three and uh, the 10th elementary. So that does kind of have a, a bigger hit right there, but we do kind of stabilize. I, I guess I'd, I'd like to point out that as we kind of go through each year, the, the line has been flattening out uh, because of... Uh, our underspending of our budgets and our um, ultimately not having as large a deficit as uh, as had been adopted the previous August. So uh, we would hope that that flattening would continue as we go out into the future. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Thank you very much for that. We'll move on to C2 consideration discussion of possible action related to FASB update 105. Dr. Ely. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yokin. Uh, Texas Association of School Boards are our policy uh, consultants and they keep all of our board policy. Um, tonight on the regular scheduled agenda, uh, we have for your consideration an uh, update to our local policy. I'll just remind the board that the administration went through um, time this last spring uh, looking at all of our uh, local policies um, and practices in the district and we've made some recommendations for some updates. We've talked about those in previous workshop sessions. Um, and so that's for your approval at the regular scheduled meeting. What TASB update 105 is, it's a primarily uh, a, uh, an update to legal policies. There are some local ones that are affected. These are primarily driven by changes in federal, um, uh, in federal law. When the No Child Left Behind Act was changed, the Every Student Succeeds Act, um, and I guess that was December, uh, there were some change to federal law that changed uh, how we do things at, at our local education agency. A lot of those have to do with teachers and whether they're highly qualified or certified and changes to some contract language. So uh, that's what the majority of that is. Uh, we do not have any uh, action on this tonight. Uh, I did send uh, this out to you, Alayla. I apologize for that. Um, uh, so I don't know if you've had time to review that. If you have, that's great. If you have, you have to ask questions. We can put those down. Uh, but if you do have questions, please get them to me, and uh, we can have those answered by the time we come back to our August meeting. It would be our intent uh, to have this for approve uh, for your approval at the August regularly scheduled meeting. But having said that, as, uh, as anybody's had the opportunity to read through those, does anybody have any questions that we might be able to answer, or at least? Jot down to be able to write back to you. Anybody? It's the wrong drop in from reading. Okay. With that, 
that, then we'll move on to C3, consideration discussion of possible action related to the annual board training requirements. Dr. Ely. Thank you, Dr. Yokin. Um, members of the community, it's uh, probably no surprise that to be on a, a, a trustee, uh, member uh, of the board of trustees requires uh, ongoing training uh, and, and what it is to be a trustee and to administer uh, and oversee a school district. In fact, uh, uh, the Texas Education Code does mandate a certain amount of training hours uh, for existing board members uh, and for new board members, and there are some slight differences. Um, you will recall that, uh, per another statute, that each board member's hours must be formally read into the record at the last board meeting of the calendar year. So Mrs. Uh, Horn will be here and will uh, read everybody's hours into the record. Uh, at our December regularly scheduled board meeting. Since we're about halfway there, we thought it'd be a good idea to share with you your transcript. Uh, so you have that in front of you. Uh, also have uh, this table, this landscape table here that talks about uh, the required hours uh, for, uh, for each board member. Um, we do have the Texas Association of School Administrators and Texas Association of School Boards training, uh, I'm sorry, annual conference that's coming up. Uh, in September in Houston, uh, and so that will be a great opportunity for everybody to get the remainder of their um, Tier 3 hours done. I'll remind the board that uh, uh, experienced board members, seasoned board members need five hours of Tier 3 training. Uh, Mr. Nugent, as a new board member, needs 10 hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll go back up to the top for Tier 1 training. Uh, that has to do with uh, orientations to the education code and changes in policy. Uh, there are no requirements for existing uh, board members with the exception of when there has been an, uh, a legislative year. There was a legislative year last um, in spring 2015 and um, at the conference um, this last September, October, I believe everybody was able to get um, the one hour update uh, to the education code based on the last mm -hmm. legislative session. So. Um, so that is there. Um, the Tier 2 is our team building. We have a, an, uh, an agenda item after this to talk about team debate and team building. Uh, everybody has satisfied the requirements for that already. If you see a discrepancy or you have a question uh, in regards to your uh, transcript there, please get with Mrs. Horn and make sure we have all the information back uh, from you uh, to make sure that the record is uh, correct. So I'd love to entertain any questions or comments. Okay. So everybody will take that action to just verify and so that if you do have a variance or you need to take an online course, you do it prior to the board meeting <laughs> where Ms. Horn reads our names out. <laughs> just just to make sure it's confirmed to people what that means. We will not. We will not need one. So it'll all be fine. Just to hit my five That's it. Yes, sir. So, so the next thing is, is because we were talking about the training, I asked the administration to put C4 on the agenda tonight since we kind of are light in the workshop. And it's consideration discussion of possible action related to team of eight training. If you recall, we went to the Schletke weekend in um, Bastrop in January and at that time because of the time away and the opportunity to really spend time quality time in a, in a formatted manner we had discussed that perhaps we would do that next year for our team of eight training and, and I would like to um, get some feedback from you on whether or not you're still interested in doing that because I do think it's important as we go forward and put our calendar together for the next school year, if indeed that is what we're going to do in January, we need to explicitly mark that that's what we're going to do in January because um, it's important that everybody be able to attend. So that would be my suggestion, but I'm, I'm really interested in getting some feedback from the rest of you. You want to? <laughs> Anybody else? I agree. I'm 
looking forward to it. I think there's a lot of benefit getting away and more than now we're really concentrating on. I really issues. like that we were able to get feedback from other school boards and have all those other folks there uh, and get a lot of their feedback was very beneficial, I felt. Okay, good. I want to go ahead and put that then on the calendar as something that we are going to do. I think it will be important that we all put it on our calendar. So, Ms. Horn, perhaps if you can send out in the next transmittal what that date is. I can tell you it's are you uh, tell right January 6th and 7th. Okay. Just Same place. I'm, in the old, I'm currently in the lottery to attend camp. Risk it. I think the odds that I win that lottery are slim, but I'll I'll forego it regardless. Uh, camp. Uh, be there, uh -oh. be square. No. Did you go with us last year? This is the big one, man. Oh. This, is, this is Food Waste Texas up at the the meat department. They have one camp brisket all every year for two days. It's on the fifth and the sixth. Yeah, John tried to get in that last year. He didn't get in. No, I mean, it's a big lottery. If you win, it's like hitting the lottery. It's yeah, and even if you know someone, it doesn't help. No, so. I mean, it's... It is well, if you win, I guess we excuse you. No, it's we Team of Eight. Oh. It's Team of Eight training. Carol, you can't get you rid of win, me that we'll easy. We'll find someone to fill your spot. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll send one of our significant others to, to learn how to cook brisket to teach you. I'll be devastated, but <laughs> we'll make it work. All right, fair enough. So, so, I just wanted to add that to the record because I think it's very important. Right. So. so the other, <laughs> so the other thing that that needs to be added to as well is any packets that were going to be picked up by those interested in running for school board. That that is a date requirement for attending, and so that if that doesn't work in someone's schedule, that they can get out of brisket cooking and and come. So or just don't pick up your packet. Well, tease them. <laughs> okay, with that, we're going to adjourn. Um, we'll be back at 7 o'clock. <laughs>